think uh, the nationalisation debate uh, continues to rumble on. Um, whether people look at uh, Venezuela or Bolivia or what's happened in Argentina with certain Spanish assets, uh, I don't know when thinking about nationalisation. But anyway, there was a, a definitive statement yesterday from a South African politician in the studio with me to discuss this is Nick Brain, independent political analyst. Nationalisation, Nick, welcome by the way. Thank um, you. Uh, nationalisation, it keeps on rumbling on, maybe because it's a politically charged year in South Africa, it will continue to do so amongst certain radical elements. But has it been put to bed, do you think, by Susan Shabango yesterday? I think it has been put to, get to, to bed, but I think it's important to understand the context and in, in a way the tectonic pressures that the ANC is under. Um, when Irvin Jim took up the fallen spear of Julius Malema with the nationalization of mines and the, and the expropriation of white-owned farmlands and breaking the back of mono white monopoly capital, all the, the kind of language he used yesterday. Um, this, is the, this is the month the ANC is leading up to a major conference that it has called the second transition. That is the leading idea of that conference, that we, um, w that we had a political transition in, in 1994. It was struck on, on, from a position of weakness. Now we can go to a much more thoroughgoing transformation that will include politics, uh, sorry, economics and, and, and social issues. So the pressure for nationalization, as enshrined in the Freedom Charter, is not the, 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 there's no let up. The state involvement in the mining sector document that the ANC has very, leadership has very carefully crafted that includes um, um, ta tax increases, it, in, it includes um, linking a whole range of obligations on, on the, to, the, to, to the mining companies, and it includes um, 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 price controls for, for, for certain kinds of feedstock inputs into the South African economy. That is a compromise uh, that it has struck against the nationalization of mines core. It's a, it's a radical compromise. They are, uh, depending on how that, 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 that plan is implemented, it's going to add hugely to the business of mining in this country. Are there people within the party, whether it be a, an election, an important election year or not, that actually believe that nationalization could work for South Africa, given the fact that history dictates and, and current experience dictates that it doesn't work in countries, for example, like Venezuela? Yeah. I'll put it this way. I think the leading faction of the party, the most advanced elements of the party, are absolutely clear that nationalization would be a catastrophe. And I think that they've, they've gone to all the trouble of preparing the documents that they have. So why do they pay lip service to the radical elements that uh, clearly think that it might work? Because the ANC has always been this broad church compromise. The ANC has always tried to play this role of keeping the radical demand, which, it's, which is very widespread in its constituency and membership, um, give us our land back. It was taken. Why mm. should we pay for it? Those ideas, the, the mines are owned by foreigners, that money's draining out of the country, black labor has paid for it. Those ideas are very powerful in the ANC's constituency. Yeah. And you've always had an advanced, sophisticated leadership balancing and trying to keep those guys on board. Justifiably so. I mean, let, let's face it, our Absolutely. history uh, justifies those sort of radical elements of uh, thoughts. But on the other hand, I think there's an elegant way to do it. I mean, Australia, for example, hasn't nationalized its mines, but it's in, imposed these extraordinary taxes. I mean, we're already doing that with, ro with royalties, etc. Maybe we, there should be some compromise in between the two. Well, I think this document, the state involvement in the mining sector mm. document, and this two or three year study they've done that that, that justifies it. It's a long document. The long version is four or mm. 500 pages. Um, the, 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 the summary is 50 pages. And it's one of the documents due for this conference. It, is, it is, does precisely that. Many, m you'll speak to the mining mm. business itself, and they'll say, this is too far. Yes. Uh, the platinum sector is barely profitable. We're closing down everywhere, and you're now going to impose new costs on us, new taxes. Very true. Um, it's, it's an extraordinarily difficult problem. The ANC knows that it has to make mining profitable or the investment is not going to come. But it also knows it has to have an answer to its constituency that is angry and aggrieved and its members that are angry and aggrieved. So the Irvin Jim is a perfect representative of that constituency. He's not a fool, um, but he's NUMSA. Um, and even he's been criticized by the National Union of Mine Workers um, as too radical, as threatening investment in the sector. Gosh, so well, that's quite a thing, if he's, if he's too radical for them. Uh, just for, uh, quickly, Nick, what about a state mining company? I mean, could that work? I mean, if it was, say, populated by people from 
the private sector. If, for example, senior executives from, uh, with, with mining experience helped set up this, this uh, potential entity, do you think it might work? Do you think that might be a solution? It's more than a potential entity. It is actually in existence now. It's mm. been taken out of the Central Energy Fund and it's been mm. capitalised gradually into a state-owned mining company. And in fact, if you look at the documents preparing the second transition documents, there are going to be national champion companies in a whole range of sectors in South Africa in, in, the, in the future. Gov that's why they didn't sell the telecom stake. Mm. Um, they want state-owned entities at the centre of, of, of a whole range of sectors. That's the Chinese model, and they are enamoured with the model. I think they might be making a mistake. I think as China moves away from that model, as, as the, the commodity super cycle tails off, um, it's, the ANC is being tempted to play a much more vigorous role um, it's with state-owned mining companies, it can work. It's going to work, mm. um, um, or to, there's going to. It's going to happen. It's, we will have to see how it, how it plays out, though, and how how well it works, and whether it's, it it saves the sector. It's quite an exciting development, and if it works well, then goodness me, it could be a model for for the rest of the world. I mean, it, it is quite exciting. And uh, Nick, thanks so much for coming in this morning. That's Nick Burain, independent political analyst.